We have to call the mantra doctor. And Radharani says, don't bring any man here. You people are always talking about me and other men. If some man comes here to touch me, not going to permit it. But this emergency, you're going to die. We have to bring the mantra doctor. He said, if you bring a man here to touch me, then I will leave my body just on my own good. Now what are we going to do? And then she went outside, what are we going to do? Is there some lady who knows these mantras? <laughs> and somebody said, well, Gargi, her, her sister, Gargi is the niece of, Gar uh, of Gargacharya. Gargacharya must know those mantras. So maybe Gargi knows those mantras. She's the niece of Gargacharya. So everybody went to Gargi and they said, Gargi, do you know those mantras? So I don't know those mantras. But just so happened, my cousin's sister, Vidyavali, has come today from Mathura. She's been married in a very, very aristocratic family, in Brahmin family in Kashi. But just yesterday, she came home to visit her father, and today she came here to Braj to visit me. Maybe Vidyavali knows all those mantras. Quick! So they all run to, to Gargi's house, and they see this beautiful black and white <coughs> sitting there, Brahmini sitting there. Mm -hmm. And they come, said, do you know those mantras for the snake? Did you learn those mantras from your father? Because our daughter-in-law, Radharani, has been bitten by a snake. She's going to die. Vijavali says, Radharani? Well, I certainly know those mantras. But I've heard all the stories about this Radha and this Krishna. If I got involved in this thing and my name got tainted, and my, I've been married with a very aristocratic Brahmin family in Kashi, and if my father-in-law hears that I'm involved in some scandal, then he will throw me out of the house. And if my father-in-law throws me out of the house, how can I return to my father's house? No, no, I wouldn't possibly go. But this is an emergency. You have to come. I said, no, no, no. Plus, I've heard that this fellow, he wanders around the roads of Raj with his lustful eyes looking at all the girls of Raj. And he so much as cast his glance upon me, I would simply die. I, I simply can't get involved. And then it says, Oh, Vijavali, staying with those Mayavadis there in Kashi, your heart has become like a stone. You don't understand the, the begging, the pleading of the Prishpasis. How can your heart be so stone-like? You can't help the Prishpasis. Oh, well, when you put it like that, I guess I'll go with you make sure that rascal doesn't come around. Yeah, no, no, we'll go with big sticks. He won't come near you. You'll, you'll see, you'll see. So carrying big sticks, they wander through the roads of Braj to, to this place, Javat. And they get here, and Vijavali sees Radharani lying there with a beautiful blue sari. She always wears a blue, dark blue, because it reminds her of her Pranana Sri Krishna. And Bijavali comes and begins to massage the lotus feet of Sri Radha. Then up to the ankles, to the thighs, to the waist, up to the chest. She's massaging. She says, the poison has not risen to the brain yet. But it is a very dangerous poison. And I know some mantras that my father taught me in the process. It's a little strange, I hope you don't mind. But I'm going to have to chant these mantras and chew on beetle. And then, I will, that chew beetle I will transfer from my mouth to the mouth of your daughter, but I don't mind you. This is what my father taught me. And Tatila says, well, we're Vaishyas and you're, you're a Brahmani. We always accept the remnants of the Brahmins. Yes, anything, anything that will save our daughter, but please do it. So he probably begins to chew beetle and chant mantras. Then she places, I mean, she places her lips over Srimati Radharani's lips and transfers that needle from her mouth into Radha's mouth. And Radha's eyes begin to flicker a little bit. And she shivers a little bit, but she doesn't do that. Then Vijavali says, now I've understood. This is a very, very dangerous snake. Now my father has taught me one mantra, how to counteract this snake's poison. By the power of this mantra, I will bring that serpent here and tell him to take his poison back. But to chant this mantra, I need three hours of complete concentration. 
if my concentration is disturbed in any way, I'll have to sto start over. And if I have to start over, then your daughter-in-law is going to die. No, 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 no. Don't worry. We'll go away. We won't. We'll leave you in peace. So then she goes out the door. She locks the door from the inside. I said, don't even stand outside the door. You go far away. Everyone goes far away. Now, Radha and Krishna have three hours to laugh and joke together. Nobody's going to bother them. So after three hours and five minutes, then they begin to walk down the hallway. Three hours and ten minutes, they come a little further down the hallway. Three hours and fifteen minutes, they're right outside the door. Then suddenly, they hear the voice of the Javali. Oh, black snake, by the power of my mantra, I have called you here. Why have you bitten this poor, innocent young girl? Hmm? Where have you come from and why have you bitten this poor, innocent young girl? Then they hear the voice of the snake. I am coming from Kailas, from my master, Lord Shiva. And he has sent me here uh, to bite Abhimanyu. Then why did you bite Brother Rani? Uh, and why would you want to bite Abhimanyu? Because this Jatila has insulted my master, Lord Shiva, because his partial expansion is Dravasmuni, who's given a benediction to Srimati Radhika, whereby she cooks for Sri Krishna. But this Jatila has stopped her from going to cook for Krishna and is always speaking bad words about Sri Krishna. And not finding Abhimanyu, I decided to bite his wife because she is the life of her husband. And if Radha dies, then Abhimanyu will automatically die. But isn't there any way you can take back your poison and save this poor girl? Yes, I can take back my poison and save this girl. If Jatila will promise never to stop her from going to an underground to cook for Sri Krishna. No, no, she can go every day. There's no problem, no problem. And she must never speak ill words about Sri Krishna. No, no, I promise. I'll never speak. Actually, I'm just so old and senile. I know it's Subal. He puts on a wig and he goes be, he goes in front of Krishna. And I think it's actually Radharani. I'm so old and senile. You, know, you have to forgive me. Please save our daughter-in-law. All right, I'm taking my poison and returning to my master, Lord Shiva in Kailas. But if I ever hear that Jatila has spoken any ill word of Sri Krishna or stops Srimati Radhika from going to cook for him, then I will come here and I will bite uh, this Abhimanyu and Sri Radha. And this Jatila, she will suffer miserably for the rest of her miserable life. <laughs> so now I'm taking my poison and returning to Kailash. <coughs> then Bajavali opens the door and everybody comes in. And Radharani's eyes are bright, her cheeks are pink again, the luster has come back to her face. Why not? She had three hours of free time with Krishna. 